Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Your host today is Richard Fields. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the show, we have Kelly Carden, who's a, a candidate for supervisor in the uh, county of Kern in Southern California. Also, John Cameron, regular on Libertarian Counterpoint. Let's start out with, uh, with you, Kelly. Uh, tell us a little bit, first of all, about your background and heritage. So, um, my mom is a Filipino immigrant. She came to America in 1969, the same year that we actually went to the moon, which is pretty cool. Uh, my grandparents were, were very poor, you know, type of feed the children kind of poverty. You know, my grandfather used to, was a guerrilla fighter during World War II. My grandmother was just a homemaker. She was illiterate, didn't speak any language, or only spoke Tagalog, couldn't read or write in any language. Um, but she died an American. So, I mean, I, she, she was, my grandfather was very proud of that. Um, you know, like I said, my grandpa was a guerrilla fighter during World War II. He fought for his homeland when the, when the Americans left. He was stuck. That's that was his home. So he always, you know, talk about how important it was to understand what being an American meant. You know, he really his his happiest day was when the Americans came home, or when the Americans, I should say, were returned to the Philippines. Um, that's really what what his happiest day of his life. Not his thirteen kids or his two hundred some odd three generations worth of grandkids. It was. The Americans coming back because they meant there was a future. Um, they came here. My mom moved to. She married, married an American serviceman um, when she was a teenager. Came to America. Met my dad in Los Angeles in the early '80s. Uh, my dad actually passed away two months after I was born from melanoma. And my mom met my stepdad in this little town that I've grown up in. I've lived in this little town called Roseman my whole life. I have four children. All my kids actually go to the same elementary school that I went to, that my stepdad went to, that his siblings went to. It's it's kind of a cool little town. My mom's my mom came from absolutely nothing. She has, she's owned her own business for thirty years now here in town. It's pretty impressive, you know. I, it's I'm proud of being from here. Tell us a little bit about uh, your town, Rosemont. So Rosemont's a small little desert community. We're about fifteen thousand people. Um, the we're on the east side of the main gate of Edwards Air Force Base. We're eleven miles north of Lancaster in LA County, and we are the southern the southeastern um, region of of the desert. I mean, it is hot. Well, Kern County is, isn't it the largest county in, in California uh, geographically? I think San Bernardino County is, but I guess I'm not 100% yeah. certain. Kern County is, is a lot of things. It's the second most, um, they grow more agriculture in Kern County than all but Fresno County in the entire country. They, we pump more oil than the state of Oklahoma. We um, generate more renewable energy than anywhere else in the state and most places in the country as well. You know, Elon Musk has SpaceX here, so we do we get to see a lot of that. Those things. We actually have a spaceport about 14 minutes from my house in Mojave, California. Um, pretty cool little town, you know. Tell us why you're running for uh, county supervisor in this uh, uh, wonderfully diverse county. Yeah, so um, I was really pissed off, Richard, at the water increases this year. You know, I have, like I said, a lot of kids. Man, a water bill affects me a lot. You know, we own my my family business, we own my home. So I'm getting hit twice on this on these ridiculous water increases. So what happened is I got really involved with the water increase, you know, going to the meetings, helping organize protests to try to keep the water rates down. And but what happened was I was so angry that I found myself like literally yelling at the men on the board. But there's a problem with that when you live in a town like mine, right? The men on the board are it was a man who educated my dad. He's my dad's 70. He was one of my dad's high school teachers and he was my high school teacher. Um, another man on the board has been a local pastor here for, for 50 years. I went to his church. I mean, this, these are men that I've known my whole life. And another guy on the board is a friend of mine. We've known each other since sixth grade. So it started off with a water board and I was yelling at these people that I know and respect, right? Then it hit me. I don't have anything to do with it. Gavin Newsom is the one who's ruining our water in this state. These outrageous restrictions telling everyone they can only take water from the reclamation project. We used to pump 70% of our ground, 75% of our water in my town used to come from the ground. Now only 5% comes from the ground and the rest comes from the reclamation project. It's going to cause our bill in this town to go about 80% over the next five years. It's, it's, and so I said, you know, if, if, how do I fix this? I'm going to go to three county. I'm going to go for county board. You know, I have a very unpopular um, county supervisor named Zach Scrivener. Literally everyone that I've ever talked to has said the only time they've ever seen him was when he comes to our town for the parade. He's walked in front of my store every year since I was since 2009, and he's never stepped foot inside our building. He's only walked by to get into the parade. 
Uh, tell us a little, a little bit about the race itself. Is it a, uh, uh, is it a district race or is it uh, for the entire county? Well, so it's eventually going to be the entire state. Um, the, the, the Democratic governor is changing all of the rules where all of our water comes from. I'm you talking about the, uh, the, the county the, supervisor race. The county supervisor race. Is the race is the race the county supervisor race? Okay. I thought you said rates. I'm sorry. See, that's yeah. what I was talking about. Some words. So it's uh, my win total is 24,000 votes. Um, Kevin McCarthy is actually my congressman. So Kern County is considered one of the most conservative districts in the state, but it's not. It's just very anti-democratic, and that's perfectly fine. Most people aren't happy with the Republicans either. Um, we're running a platform on on being a sanctuary, water, oil, and guns. Um, we're going to talk about Second Amendment nullification because most of my people are very strong Second Amendment supporters. Gerrymandering in this case is really going to help me. Our district went from being very, very right-leaning to being considered the only toss-up district in in this in the county. So that helps. Okay, uh, as governor, is he, your your opponent is he uh, running? Uh, is there is this a two a two-way race? As of now, it is. So he in two thousand four he ran he ran for re-election unopposed, and. So four years later, on the day of open filing, four, three other candidates all put their name in, and they all said that if somebody had announced early, they wouldn't run. So being a libertarian, I'm going to need a little extra runway anyways to really connect with people. I, I'm announcing a year early. I mean, we're going to go for about 18 months, um, days of service in, in towns all over the district, letting people know who I am, the things that I think can be done better and different. And just really establishing myself as being different from the Republicans who really don't go far enough in anything. You know, they, they're not really Second Amendment supporters. They're not really free market supporters. They just are better on those issues than the Democrats. But better course, is good. <laughs> which, wouldn't, which wouldn't take much, I guess. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, better well, is uh, good, I guess. I mean, you know, that's like saying that I'm tall. I'm the tallest in my family, but I'm 5'9". That's not really saying that. <laughs> so you, you mentioned Second Amendment, and uh, I looked at your website, and you're talking about uh, making sure the sheriff doesn't uh, unduly enforce uh, Second Amendment regulations that are probably unconstitutional. Is that is that the the, the route that you would talk take? That is the route that I would take. Um, I'm kind of on board with the whole Tenth Amendment Center idea of nullification, using sheriff nullification and legislative nullification. You know, for instance. You know, gun control really isn't ever gun control. It's usually just punitively enforced, right? So who does it really affect? It only affects people that can't pay the fees. So all you've done is disarm your poor populations. But but legislative nullification says that I can propose a rule saying that the Kern County Sheriff is not going to partner with the ATF enforcing the National Firearms Act of 1934. That means the ATF can still enforce that but they're not gonna be able to use my local sheriff to do it. Partnerships don't work unless everybody helps. So if we eliminate the partnership and we put it in law saying that Donnie Youngblood cannot take part in these things, then he can't. Uh, cannabis is another issue that is really interesting in California. It's uh, you know ostensibly legal, both recreational and medicinally uh, throughout the state, but the uh, uh, administration of what makes it legal is uh, left to counties and, and uh, towns. Uh, how is Kern County uh, handling it? Is it uh, are, are they allowing cannabis grows and cannabis uh, retailing and uh, cannabis uh, wholesaling? So two cities in Kern County do. Arvin and California City both allow um, legal grow shops, legal shops in their towns. Nowhere else in the county has it. Um, you, you are allowed to use like delivery services that are of course super expensive and you have to wait hours for your delivery. But like the shop that are open, they can be raided at any time. So there is a solid prohibition on it and it makes it dangerous. There was a story just a couple weeks ago where, where a shop Excuse was robbed. For just a second, I'll be right back. A shop was robbed. And so the men inside defended themselves, right? Because if someone pulls a gun on me, I'm fighting back. And the, the robber was killed. He was shy and killed. Sorry about that. Instead of being able to call the police, because of the prohibition, they literally, they boarded their walls up and left the guy sitting there in, in the parking lot. But if, it had, if there had been a legal avenue for that shop to be open, they would have just called the police. You know, it's the idea that the, that the shops can make things more dangerous 
is silly. It's the black market is what we know makes things dangerous. So the shop around the corner from my mom's store was hit last week. And they came in, the girl came over, she was crying. It's scary. I was just minding my business and there's shotguns in my face. She's like a 19 year old girl. Are you kidding? So uh, what would you be able to do as a county supervisor to uh, change the situation in a county wide? We would propose a le legislation legalizing marijuana and ending the prohibition on it. We would, um, you know, and whatever that looks like, right? Ultimately, um, the, the complaints about the shops are this, they're dirty, they're dangerous and they smell. But these guys aren't incentivized to fix their locations up because they can be raided at any point. So we stopped the Kern County Sheriff from enforcing the federal law, right? We just tell them you're not gonna do this anymore. That's one step, you know? And then through that, that'll force these shops to fix their buildings. They'll get permits, they'll, they'll monetize, right? They'll be able to charge tax. The biggest thing that I haven't really figured out how to do yet, but I would like to allow these shops to use banks. I mean, Richard, I, I don't know if you've ever been inside any of these, man, but like I've seen in the back and they've got like safes full of cash, buckets of it, because they can't deposit their money in, in the bank. <laughs> so now... Yeah, well, uh, to answer your question, I have not been into a shop. Uh, I, I tried to go in one once and found out that I had to put my name on a statewide registry and I decided I didn't want to do that. Uh, so, uh, so I've never set foot actually inside of a shop, but I am aware that very large uh, guards, very, very imp uh, imposing looking uh, bodyguards are uh, guarding most of marijuana shops simply because of all that cash laying around. Yeah, they have to be. It's, 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 it's just, it's crazy, man. No, I, th I, think, hmm? I, th I think that there are financial institutions that, that will uh, handle uh, transactions for uh, pot stores. I, unlike Richard, I didn't care that my name was on on a uh, on a statewide registry I'm I'm probably on so many watch lists now that adding yeah. myself to one more because I write thrillers and I research stuff that is just you know I'm sure I'm on lots of watch lists and yeah. and there are financial institutions that are willing uh, I think the the workaround is is uh, at the federal level any federally uh, insured uh, you know they have to respond to you know, to federal government mandates and stuff like that. But if you're, you know, a state registered state of California, like a credit, uh, union. A credit union or something like that. And I think yeah. uh, some banks, because uh, not that I've ever done this myself, but it's yeah. my understanding that you could, you could go in and use a, a credit card or a debit, I think a debit card. And I'm not sure about a credit card, just a standard. I'm not going to mention their names because I don't want to promote them. Um, but uh, I, I think it's it's doable. Other people are doing it in the state. They're they're you know a lot of them also they'll have an ATM machine in in the yeah. in the thing and do it that way. But the cash, you know the they're they're, they're uh, guys with uh, uh, not ballistic armor, but they're wearing you know bullet slowing vests. You don't want to call them yeah. bullet stopping vests because they won't stop a hunting rifle. And mm -hmm. they're carrying, they're, they have carry licenses and weapons and all the rest of that. And so, you know, you'd, you'd have to think pretty hard about, about cracking one of those places. But then again, yeah. you know, they, if, if you did that at, at one of these, what, pop, I almost think, think the things that you have in, in, in your town, or I think of them as pop-up stores. They don't, they can't defend themselves. It's the same problem with, you know, I mean, prostitution. When yeah. prostitution was legal, you wouldn't have pimps beating up prostitutes. So, uh, you know, they'd be guilty of assault on their workers and all the rest of that. But so it's it there there are there are ways other people are doing it, and I laud yeah. I commend you for doing it because you know the, the the bummer about what the state of California has done is they've made the tax on the stuff so outrageous unless you have a a, a medical card that. Uh, uh, you know, people are going back to their local dealer because they can get, you know, the good stuff from them at a lower cost. So once again, the California has managed to screw up a, a, a revenue screen. But anyway, I mean, anyway. I just, uh, I just had, sold a house in, in, in uh, Yolo County and was in the, my daughter's in the, in the market for, was in the market for a house in, uh, in Orange County. And the, the, the prices of real estate have gone sky high. Is that the same in uh, Kern County? And if so, uh, how much of that is, a result of uh, uh, government policy directly or indirectly? Well, so 
I think just last week a report came out and they're they're saying now they're claiming that 23% of the cost of, of the average home is government regulations and tariffs and fees. So, I mean, with that said, I think it's 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 not the same as some places. So for instance, my home, we bought it in 2013. We paid, I think, 95000 for it. And this worth like- oh, wait, two wait a second, hold on. This is a house that's got plumbing for $95,000? Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's that weird town. Like, it's straight, and this was in 2003, 13. You know, my mom bought a house in 1996 when he moved here and it was like the same cost. But now it's worth about triple. So, I mean, it is definitely going up quickly, but I mean, even if I sold, I'd have to move out of state, right? I could never move anywhere else for, in the state. Even if I made all the cash on it, I'd be broke. <laughs> so what can you do at the county supervisor level to ameliorate the uh, ridiculous uh, inflation and the cost of homes? I realize part of it is due to federal money printing policy and, and other extraneous uh, statewide forces. But at the, at the county level, what can you do? So I think the most important thing to do is we can waive all of the fees and associated at the county level, right? Um, anything that you pay that if when you have an inspector come out, you're paying that fee, just not charging for it, you know, just letting these like uh, helping eliminate any kind of cost we can. It would be several thousand dollars at least that could be saved from just a, not from eliminating some of those local and county fees. Outside of that, I think the idea is with Kern County getting marijuana legalized and getting hemp legalized, we need a ultimately culturally we have to stop using trees for paper and toilet paper and napkins you know i think that's part of it trees are are we consider them renewable but are they i mean how many how many decades you have to wait to cut that tree down again right so that's one of the things is we would just by removing those prohibitions we hopefully free markets will be able to shine and just eliminating those fees that on the that i'm able to obviously i can't eliminate state fee, state rules that say every house has to have a solar panel on it now but I, there are smaller ones that could be done locally. Well, some of the other, I, I would, I would assume you could also, uh, you said inspector's fees. You could also say that, well, maybe uh, inspections are not actually necessary. Let not the buyer beware, or let them do their own inspections. So, funny thing that you would say that I used to own a restaurant in in my district called TK's Pizza in Tehachapi, California, and we had to bring the inspector out. He didn't check anything. He asked us what we did, and we just pointed. And he said, okay. And he signed off and left and it cost me 300 bucks. And I'm like, and I looked at my buddy and I said, that was the most useless like expert that I've ever met in my life. Like he didn't need to come here. <laughs> but you yeah, paid for it, I'm sure, one way yeah, or another. That. So what are the, can, can I interject a question here? What are the uh, permit costs like in Kern County? They're outrageous in other places. Do you know what they are for single family home? I don't, I'm gonna have to look those up. Okay. And, um, okay. I'll, I'll get back to you on this. Yeah, because in most, most places, there, there's no, it's basically a permit. And I hate calling it a permit as if the government has a right to give us permission to build a home, but that's what people call it. We should call it something else, like extortion. Uh, and it, and it's, it's a huge cost. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked, and I know Richard's got a couple other things he wants to discuss. Yeah, one of the other things I'm interested in, one of the reasons why we're having a, uh, how can I call it, a, a breakdown in political discourse is because we are not educating our children uh, in the Constitution. We're not educating our children in, uh, you know, Western values. We're not edu educating children in uh, how a civilization actually works. Yes. Education is a huge issue, and public education is essentially granting a monopoly to government-supported uh, uh, unions whose uh, members are primarily interested in. Uh, making the union members better off, not the kids better off. What would you do to get at the base issue of uh, a problem in education in Kern County? Oh, man. Where do I begin with that, right? Sorry, my, my four-year-old's knocking on the door. He's trying to get in. I locked him out. I think we're going to work towards some school choice. You know, I would like to, to work into, into some of that. There's um, a couple organizations that are doing really good things, trying to push school choice. Where I am, I mean, we'd have to go to the next county. But the idea that the only people who can educate our kids is a government education, the problem is it's not education, it's, it's propaganda. I mean, so I recently got into a discussion because somebody asked, my, asked me, why don't you tell, have your kids say the Pledge of Allegiance? I said, because they don't know what any of those words mean. <laughs> my my five-year-old can't define indivisible. She has no idea what she's saying. But we teach these people it's the only right thing, right? So 
I'm a huge fan of like the acting academies. We've homeschooled one of my sons for a couple of years um, while he was, his behavior was bad. He was like the crazy one. And, um, but things like that, you know, I mean, we can't just keep empowering schools, but there are ways to work around that, right? Like teachers, we, I think we all will agree that the average teacher doesn't make enough money. But it's all, you know, by I, I won't, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. <laughs> but not all of them. I, I have a brother that does quite well. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be real, but he, he's also a high level teacher. He coaches sports, so he gets his other little chunks, but he doesn't even, his, like 62% of, of teachers, a public school teacher, 62%, will at least one year of their kid's life send their child to private school. No. So if they're not using public school, why should we? No, in LA, no, in LA County, I think it's it's over sixty percent. Well, in LA County is probably the worst school district in in yeah. California, and uh, the teachers are paid more than anybody else based upon their standard of living. But anyway, we could spend a whole show on that too. Yeah. So. You're, you're running in a, a nonpartisan race, right? It's a nonpartisan race. Okay, uh, and you, there's a there's a a precedent for uh, a libertarian winning. In a non uh, nonpartisan race, and of course, I'm I'm talking about uh, Jeff Hewitt, who won mm-hmm. in uh, Riverside County just uh, last year, the year before, and is now running a credible campaign for governor. Do you uh, see uh, yourself following his example or doing some of the things that he did in order to be successful in running for county supervisor? Yes, absolutely. Um, Jeff Hewitt, I think, has kind of gotten the formula. He said himself, he's done it wrong enough times to kind of figure it out, right? He was going for the state house and he was going for state senate. Republicans win local. We win nonpartisan races, especially one on one. He was he only raised a third of what the other guy raised, and he he creamed him. And I think he has a great opportunity to be the next governor. If there's no, none of the other guys are any good, John Cox is a joke with his stupid bear. <laughs> and then so, okay. uh, so what, what kind of a campaign are you running? Do you have a ground operation door to door? Do you have? Uh, uh, billboards, uh, advertising, what what kind of, is it, uh, you know, are you, are you looking for donations? Uh, so can people get do that on your website? What What's the uh, the nuts and bolts of your campaign? So we are going to be real grassroots. Um, we will be raising money. I'm not ready to raise money yet. Um, I, I, I just launched last week, but it's going to be about service, volunteerism. And um, one of the ways that we're going to, we're going to get out there is, is by doing property cleanups. And, and it's all about the money that's being charged, right? They are trying to raise an extra $2.5 million a year to pick up trash, like illegal dumping, but they're not going to use it for that. So the way that we get around those things is we eliminate the problem. And volunteerism is one of the ways to do that. And we will be raising donations. We will get some billboards put up across the district, um, you know, spending money on Facebook and, and, and doing things like that to just try to get people to the site. We have been doing a good job as far as, um, is me and a couple other guys just online and, interacting with people, getting people to respond to the, to the website. I've been getting questions asked almost every day that we've been able to, to respond to. And, and I think that, I think the response has been good. You know, we're, we're in a place that's really weird. Um, 52% of our dist- of the population in my district is Hispanic, but 70% of the voters tend to vote Republican. It's really weird. Um, so I think I have some chance, some inroads. This guy, like I said, he's not popular. We're just going to get out there. We're going to knock on doors. We're going to, we're going to go for it. You said you have a, a small business. What kind of business is it? And uh, what, what's your stance on, on business regulation? Oh, man. So my mom has had this little variety store since I was in second grade. She's also rents the U-Haul truck. So anyone who moves into our town that gets a U-Haul truck has to use our business. Um, I hate it, man. As far as like government regulations, like I don't have a restaurant anymore, but I remember how expensive that stupid health permit was every year. It was like $600 a year. It was crazy. For what? Like, I was already, I have a serve safe. There's, you're not going to get sick eating in my restaurant, regardless of if the health department is extorting me or not. So now we just have the store. It's a little store. She's getting older. My mom turned 71 in July. She'll be 71. And she's really finally thinking about not working anymore. I don't know what that means. She'll stay busy. But she's rented out half of the building now. So she's now a landlord for half her building. And she feels bad for them because they've, converted half of her store into a little restaurant and man the inspectors that came through and the and the, all the times they were going to bakersfield that's 90 minutes away you know the we're, we're killing our businesses with, with this over oh, this regulations and, and the payroll taxes are sky high it's it's not fair 
As uh, you have uh, stated, and as other people are uh, aware, a lot of the problems the counties face are problems that are imposed by the governor and by the uh, state legislature. Uh, and of course, that's an entirely uh, other story in terms of political corruption. One of the things that came to light recently is uh, the fact that uh, large corporations like, oh, I don't know, PG&E, which doesn't have any problems at all with credibility, AT&T, Comcast, Kaiser, all have contributed over, I think it is $200,000 to something called uh, the Representation Project, which is run by, uh, oh, uh, by uh, Jennifer Newsom, who is related, of course, yeah. to as wife to the governor of, of the state. And of that, uh, of those contributions, she's been taking home uh, over uh, $10 million uh, over the, or what, what was it? $250,000 a year. $290,000 a year, 20% of the, of the of what's been raised by that uh, nonprofit goes directly into the profit pockets of the governor's wife. She's not the only one. There's a whole lot of governor's wives that do very well by doing good. So and wait, to, wait, hold on. Do very well. What? The president's wives, well, they, to see the, the Clinton Foundation presented a perfect template for, for uh, I, I would say, primarily Democratic governors, but I haven't looked at the Republicans. They're probably doing the same thing. Mm. You set up a phony, well, you set up a nonprofit, put one of your relatives on it. I think uh, one of the Clinton daughters was. Uh, uh, yeah, Chelsea did, ran did the chair, chair, She did some chair filling at the Clinton Foundation and uh, was paid a half a million dollars a year. So yeah. you, you, you just, you, you give a legal, legal bribe to the, to the family through their nonprofit. Uh, and uh, then um, you, you have favorable legislation. It happens everywhere. Uh, and, and the, the, the template was, was, was presented by the uh, former president and his lovely wife. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I, you know, the people that are following that template are, are just doing what worked. And uh, I think it's, I think it's disgusting. Richard called me on using the word disgusting for something that wasn't disgusting, but this is disgusting. And I would, uh, I think it's a flat out straight up conflict of interest. And I, I see we're almost out of time. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, PG and E they're, they're still under investigation for murder. <laughs> so I, I, my question is that governor Newsom, is would you take if, if I murdered my next door neighbor? Would you take any? Would you take my campaign donations? Problem is, is he would say yes. Right? <laughs> but I mean, there's Brandon Ritterman. You guys are up, up in that area. I don't know if you know Brandon Ritterman. He's he's um put together a program called Fire Power Money. Watch that. He breaks down every dollar that PG and E has donated since they've been on probation, actively on probation and actively being investigated for murder. They've donated like $6 million to political campaigns, 10,000 of which came to Kern County to the Board of Supervisors, and they will not tell me where they donated it to. So at some point I expect to be coming to a head with them because my, my opponent, Zach Scribner, has been fined twice now by the FPPC for laundering campaign funds and misreporting. The problem is, here's where the corruption goes, his blood aunt, his relative aunt, is the district attorney. <laughs> and she's been fined too for the same thing. She stole money. Cynthia Zimmer, if you heard me, you know that you're a criminal. You stole money too. <laughs> you can go to www.cardenforkern.com. My tags on, on social media are, are, are the same, at cardenforkern dot com carden the number four kern dot com and that's carden c a r d e n right yeah good luck thank you for watching the libertarian counterpoint show in sacramento channel 17 on comcast each thursday at 8 p.m and each monday at 5 30 p.m for the knuckleheads of liberty also on youtube facebook and podcasts everywhere we invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.